Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be painting the Alchemist's Table from Hero Quest. As you can see, I have prepared it by first washing it, letting it dry, and then spraying it white. The first colour I'm going to be using is Moody Mauve. It's a nice light purple colour from Army Printer Speed Paints range. There's going to be a lot of colours used in today's video, so follow along. You don't have to use the same colours I'm using, use any colours you want, but there's going to be a lot of colours used, just so you know. The next colour up is going to be Magic Blue. Again, I'm going to pick out one of the bottles and perhaps the inkwell on the table. There is no method to my madness. I'm just trying to add a bit of color and variety to the piece. And that's the blue done. Next colour up is going to be Gilly Dew or Jilly Dew, whichever way you want to pronounce it. This is just to add contrast to the colours that I've used so far. I'm trying to keep all these colours very different if I can. Just use what you've got. As I've said before, there is no correct way to do this. Just use whatever colours you've got. Next up is Maze Yellow. This is a nice colour. As I said before, it reminds me of the Imperial Fists Yellow by Citadel. Some of you may agree, some of you may disagree. But I think it's a nice yellow anyway. And that's the yellow used. The next colour up is going to be Poppy Red. It's a nice light, bright colour. Again, trying to keep this as an eye-catching centrepiece on the table. Not going overboard with any partic one particular colour, just choose a, an area of the table and paint it that colour. Next up, Occultist Cloak. This is a very dark colour. Gonna try and keep one of the bottles darker than all the rest. Every alchemist's table needs a bottle of very dark coloured evil liquid. <laughs> and that's that done. Next up will be Hop Like Gold. I think I'm going to use this colour quite extensively. We shall see. First up's the gold chain that's sitting on the table. I am going to paint the scales with this colour as well. I think they should be made of metal and the gold is a nice, it's a nice colour. With the exception of the colour of the table, which is going to be wooden, the 
gold here is going to take the most time. Just try and be as neat as you can. But again, I'm going to be using white to cover up any mistakes that we make. I make mistakes as much as the next man, so or the next person, so everybody makes mistakes. As you can see, I have painted the drawer handles with the gold. Uh, I'm now regretting that. I think I'm going to change them later on. Just too much gold on the table now for my legging. Next up is going to be ashen stone. I'm going to say that the surface of the table is granite or marble and I'm going to use this colour as the table surface as you'll see. These Army Painter Speed Paints have very good flow. Uh, they're not thick at all. You can use the Army Painter Medium if you do feel that you need to water them down a bit or a little dab of water. But I find the flow around all these items on the table very easily without any uh, medium needed or without any water needed. Next up is Dead White and this is in the game colour line from Vallejo and I use this to cover up any mistakes I've made when using the colours. You don't even really need to do this step but I find that it just it'll keep all the brown um, the one colour keep it all the same tone and that's what we're trying to achieve. This step can take a little bit of time, just be careful, be patient. Try and lock your hands so that you're not shaking as much. And remembering that any mistakes made, even here, can be corrected easily enough. Next colour up is Purple Swarm. And I'm going to use this to paint the piece of cloth under the inkwell. It may not be a piece of cloth, but I'm going to say it's a piece of cloth. Or a piece of fabric of some description. Maybe a nice purple silk. Just take your time, be as neat as possible. Remember, we can always fix any mistakes we make with our white. And that's the cloth fabric done. Next colour up I'm going to use is Pallid Bone and I'm going to use this to paint the pages that are on the table. This will give a nice papyrus type effect or aged yellowing paper. Either one uh, is very magical in my opinion. I wouldn't expect uh, an alchemist's table to have standard white boring paper on it. Also painting the quill on the feather with this colour just to add a bit of colour. Next colour up is Grim Black. I'm going to use this as my ink. Hopefully it will give a nice deep black colour. I think that's quite effective. 
Now I'm going to add a few drops of uh, speed paint medium to the grim black and this is to make it uh, more like a wash. I want to touch around the quill, the feathers of the quill, um, just to make it stand out more. Don't want anything completely white on the table. Very quick and easy job, just be careful. And now for the big time consuming part of painting this alchemist's table, I'm going to use ruddy fur. This is my chosen colour for wood. I think it makes a nice mid-tone wood. Just take your time and be careful. Try not to paint over anything you've already painted. Just hit all the white areas. You'll see it's starting to look quite effective. I'm very pleased with this colour as wood, as a wood base. Just continue on until you have finished painting all the wood of the table, left nothing white. You'll see I've hit the tops of the bottles with this colour as well. It makes a quite a nice cork type colour. Next up is Broadsword Silver and I'm going to use this to go over the draw handles which I wasn't happy that I'd painted gold. So I'll make them uh, metal colour, like a pewter colour. I'll also use this on the needle, on the, the weight scales, just to break it up a little bit, break the gold up a little bit. And we're back to the grim black colour. I'm going to use this to simulate writing on the pages. You'll want to get a fine pointed brush for this. I'm going to use a 4-0. Just use whatever fine pointed brush you've got. And obviously we're not trying to write, we're just drawing squiggly lines and hope that it, it resembles writing. If you make a complete mess of it, we can go back over this again with white and recolor the papyrus with the, the pallid bone color and try again. And that's it. And next up, after we've let it dry, is our matte varnish. And we're going to give the table a healthy coating of this matte varnish because, as I've stated in other Hero Quest videos, it's going to see extensive use in the game. At the very least, the dungeon master is going to be picking it up and setting it down. The players may well pick it up and have a look at it as well because Everyone likes a nicely painted miniature. And just take your time and that is that. And here you can see the finished product. I'm very pleased with it. I hope you like it. I certainly do. I would appreciate if you hit the subscribe button and you hit the like button and you ring the wee bell because I'm going to be putting up an extensive array of Hero Quest videos. Thank you for watching.